And Kevin Cassidy will be second up. He's a retired legal investigator, lives in Alma, uh, whose sand education began in 2010. And he's an active member of the Buffalo County Defenders. Take it away, John. As stated, I belong to a group called the Buffalo County Defenders. Uh, some of them are here in this room. Uh, so I will try to keep the lies down to a minimum. Okay? <laughs> uh, 2010, I was at a dinner party in Menominee, Wisconsin. Uh, most of the conversation that was going on was about Walker, so you can know what kind of people I was there with. Uh, but there was a couple there uh, that told their war stories of a, 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 a Texas sand company uh, kind of trying to buy everybody's properties, uh, and they were also uh, going to be ruining uh, Hoffman Hills State Park. Now this goes back, these people have been fighting since 2007. Anyways, in 2010 that evening, I thought that they were very interesting, and I never thought about it again, okay? And late fall 2011, I woke up when a, uh, a member of the Alma uh, City Council told me that there would be uh, large sand trucks uh, to an enormous number uh, running through uh, our city on a daily basis and they told me where this was all taken place uh, and then in November of 2011 I attended my first hearing and like many of us there none of us understood the rules uh, one thing was very evident was that the sand company was running the Board of Adjustment here. In 2012, uh, I attended the next hearing. Uh, I kind of stood up and complained, as did a few others, and we noticed each other. So well, let me stop for a minute. In 2012, Buffalo County, uh, there were only four mines that had been permitted since July of 2011. But things were going to change, okay? Uh, a group that had been pushing around people in Nap, Wisconsin, Glacier Sands, was coming to be good neighbors in Buffalo County. In late winter and early spring, Glacier would put in two applications for large mines, 150 acres plus, and one very large 300 plus in a real loadout, wash and dry plant, which would become known as the Starkey Farm, which was located right across from the Cochrane Farm City School. <coughs> they had lawyers, engineers, PR people, and all the money in Texas. Now going back for a second. Those few of us that started to know, notice each other started to talk to each other. And by March, 11 people from all different corners of Buffalo County came together, actually in my dining room, uh, and decided we had one very uh, equal problem that was Glacier Sands, and we wanted to do something about that. Three of those 11 were mothers. Uh, with children in the CFC schools. We met again a week later and decided to pool our efforts and make Starkey Farm our priority. Why? Because the sand was going to go there from the other mines and without trucking to Winona or to Wabashua, the profits for that sand company were right there. Cut the head off the beast. Okay. With the short time we had coordinated the first yard signs. They went out the same day that a mailing went out to all the CFC parents. Can you hold the sign up again so we yes. can read it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, so they, we, the mailing went out to the school families. Uh, CFC parents, now including the dads, put together a website. There were others that put up together websites. Uh, our signs were, as you can see, the colors of school buses, uh, and the defenders were basically on their way. Everything became coordinated. When Glacier held its first 
information meeting at the CFC school, and we were not allowed to speak. And I, it was, that was just part of the, the, how it was set up, but we weren't allowed to speak that day. But we set up uh, booths in front of the entrance to the gym. We passed out three flyers, one that talked about fracks and mining and mines, and third uh, about this proposal that they were going to do and what the public could do, and the third one being about Glacier, who they were, the, uh, uh, the bankruptcies that were recorded in Minnesota, the water problems that they had in Texas. We researched them as much as we could. We had photos of sand mines. We had photos of rail low dots. How did you, uh, re how did you pursue that research? Uh, basically on the internet. But let me get, I'll get back to it. I'll get a second. So, okay. I don't think that Glacier knew what hit him that night. Matter of fact, one of them was overheard as saying, who are these people? Okay. <laughs> now, even the Board of Adjustment, I don't think, realized that there would be this kind of organized opposition. We set up large 4 by 8 signs on Highway 35, seen by both directions approaching the school. We put another one right next to the farm. We leased the only two billboards that were available in Fountain City. One, they had a picture of a mine and a rail loadout. Uh, the other one, looking like a child had wrote it in school. Again, no frack plant near CFC school, and it was also done a big billboard in school's colors of yellow and black. Why did we get two? Because we weren't going to let Glacier have one. <laughs> <laughs> now, this time, uh, it's, it's, well, let me, there were more mailings, there were letters to editors, there were phone calls and more phone calls, there were emails being sent, and we were still going to other hearings for other mines and at the same time pushing for a moratorium in Buffalo County. It was a very busy spring. So, now, the CFC school board uh, came on board against it. Uh, lawyers were being hired. Uh, we even had a PR person uh, doing pro bono work. And by the hearing on July 24, 2012, at the Alma High School, and by the way, uh, uh, the cost of sand, Jim Tittle doesn't give it enough flavor, okay? Uh, there were over 300 people in attendance, 80%. Uh, against it, it coordinated testimony uh, by citizens and by experts. It was 100 degrees in there, it was six hours long. Some will come back and they will say it was the lawyers, some will say it was the school board, some will say it was all the citizens, but it would not have happened without the Buffalo County Defenders, right. okay? So, on a three to nothing vote, the board denied it. Uh, two months later, the board denied Glacier's largest mine. Mount Glacier still did get the two smaller mines permitted. So for the moment, we thought cutting off the head or the rail would kill it, but it only was severely wounded. In December 2013, almost a year and a half later, Glacier brought a rezoned request at the Starkey Farm to the county. They were leaving out this time the wash uh, and dry plant and only wanting the rail loadout, which will change the farm to industrial, which is why they needed the uh, rezone. And now three things would occur. One, the township would hold a hearing and a vote, uh, and that should have carried the most weight. Two, the zoning committee will hold a hearing and vote with a recommendation to the whole county, one way or the other and three of the four county board would vote to approve or not. First, the town meeting, okay? February 5th, 2014, long time after they had been denied. <laughs> three supervisors, one being an ex-defender now, okay? Over 60 residents of the town spoke, the chairman clearly calling it over 70% against, and it was backed by many, many other people that went to town folks. Second, later that month, the zoning committee, and it was a very bad zoning committee at that time, 
after hearing the vote and after hearing from the chairman of the town saying that the town didn't want it, and after hearing tens and tens of citizens uh, that spoke against it, that zoning committee recommended it that it go forth to the county board on a three to one vote. So, on a majority vote, and this was, we knew this and this was going to be scary, okay, on a majority vote, we were going to lose by one vote and maybe two. We put up more signs, we, we had signs that said no means no, uh, again, we released a billboard, we called people and had them call people and had them call people, <coughs> call the supervisors to say no, and we had one more thing. Yeah. The defenders were working with the town people and a very good lawyer from the cities to get over 51% of the adjacent land owners next to the farm to say no. Getting those land owners to say no would force the county to have to have a three-quarter majority vote. And they didn't have those numbers. The vote was supposed to take place on March 6th by the full county board. And on March 5th, after realizing what had occurred, Michael Best and Friedrich, the, probably the most powerful law firm in Wisconsin, wrote to the county board. At this time, Glacier Sands is withdrawing the request for a rezone, citing, amongst other things, and I quote, there are people against the rezone that are spreading misinformation. Oh. Oh. And to this day, the other two permitted glacier mines have not shipped one bucket of sand. And by the way, okay, uh, with four supervisors now uh, on the county board, four of them being ex-defenders, this is what we end up with, okay? The overlay, okay, on Highway 35, same deal, same rail, cut off the beast of the head, okay? So, finally, thank you all for putting up this. Uh, I don't talk Minnesota. <laughs> but I always think about Bubsh. It's evident with the permitted mines in Buffalo County and those yet coming that we in Wisconsin and Wabasha are attached at the hip when it comes to sand. So, a group called the Maxville Nelson Defenders, one of them's here, I'm not sure if there's any others in the room, uh, is gearing up for the next big battle. They picked this battle and it involves Wabasha, and I'll tell you why. First, I'm very impressed with this group. They're very smart and talented and they're getting a lot of things done. They have one application in front of them and in some ways it might be called a small mine, it's like 40 acres. But they also know that they're asking, that they're asking for a wash plant, a dry plant, and a 40 acre mine would normally take anywhere from four to six years to mine. These people are asking for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And these, these, these Nelson uh, Maxwell protectors looked at that and they said, we've got to stop this one first, okay? And that's what they're doing. Why does it involve Wabasha? Because that's the route. So, uh, stand with these people and both sides of the river will win. And in the final, I just wanted just a little update on, on Buffalo. Buffalo has, I think, uh, Craig, maybe you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think they have six, one, two, three, <coughs> four, five, six, permitted mines, okay? The only one that's been operating is a mine called the Barth Mine, which is a small 40-acre mine, and they're not even operating now because their sand turned bad on them. Uh, <laughs> Buffalo County is not open for business, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, research, yeah, yeah. You know what? Uh, just a short one on that, okay? When we researched glacier people, we did. We found out that these guys, the, the, the guy that was going around calling himself the president, had a $26 million bankruptcy in Osseo, Wisconsin. He was a Minnesota realtor. All these guys, by the way, are just out there to get to get the you know get the contract signed, get the uh, mines okayed, and then they're going to sell it. 
The guy from Texas, the guy who said he was going to be our friend, and he had all these disputes that we found online of people that had brought uh, suits against him because he was cutting off the water to certain people. I do this in Texas. I don't know how many people live in Texas. But <laughs> the people now that we're dealing with, okay, uh, the people who now want to come in the northern part of uh, Buffalo County, they, their money comes from two guys called the Clements, okay, and one has an Iowa address and one has a Minnesota address. Uh, online we found out that they have built 70 people with an average age of 72 uh, out of, out of 7.6 million dollars, okay. They don't, they don't say that kind of stuff. These Is that people, the father's son? That's the father's son, right, yeah, yeah. Eric and uh, Conrad Clements. So. But stand by these people. They're going to need everybody's. I suggest that Wabasho come to uh, Buffalo County and Buffalo County go to Wabasho. Okay, we are all in the same boat here. So. And Rip Frick is going to be dealing with these. Yeah, let me talk. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I don't want us to forget a lesson from this conversation that um, Houston County hasn't done yet, but Buffalo did. Yeah. And, and it has to do with politics. If you don't change your county board or your township mm -hmm. board, yeah. you can be in Houston County's mm -hmm. position where 90% of the people don't want something yeah. and it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. <laughs> and the other part of it is we did, that was accomplished. But in Wisconsin, we have 14 county board members and we are one of the wow. smaller ones. And there's an election every two years. Two years. That means we, we got them elected a year ago, next year, they're going to be up for election again, and you know what's going to go on behind the scenes, mm -hmm. especially in Wisconsin. And, and, and the other part of it is that, uh, that I'm going to mention is in Wisconsin, we came this close to losing local control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's bad, bad enough to deal with that damn board we had to deal with. If, the, if our state had taken over, so we have, to be, over. we have to be proactive relative to where the decisions are going to be made. And Mike's question was about Rick Prick, and you, those of you in Minnesota are familiar with him uh, because he is Minnesota Sands, I believe, okay? Yeah. He's up in Miller. Have you noticed, he named, in that last kind of interview that I saw in one of the papers, he named Wabashaw now as being one of his interests. Well, Rick Prick was the people who went and originally signed this contract with this one that's coming up in July, okay? called Greasy Point Mines. And then somehow, and it's, you know, I mean, we don't know how, Rich, Rick Frick gave the operating to these Clement uh, people, okay? So if it stinks over here, it stinks over there, okay? And we know he doesn't have a pot to piss in it. He, everybody he deals with doesn't trust him. You know? Right, no, no, no. It's Rick Frick. Yeah, well, I heard one of his good quotes today. Yeah. Mike had told me that he, in one meeting he said, People opposed to uh, this are trying to make sand a four-letter word. A four -letter word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you all you need to know about it. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, we should reserve other questions individually. Come up to the speakers at two thirty. Uh, we'll do downstairs, and there's an intervening Thank you so much. Just give a hand for it.